You're watching T.C. McCarthy, the most handsome and entertaining science fiction author on video. Thanks for tuning in. Again, pre-order my book. Pre-ordering helps me a lot when it comes to bestsellers lists. Pew! Did a video of it right there explaining why. What am I going to be talking about today? Well, today I'm going to be covering Soyuz 18A. Now, I've done a couple of videos in the past about just how dangerous and uh, deadly the early Soviet space program was. We had our own accidents, but I think the Russians had a harder go of it and were pushing themselves too far too fast in an effort to beat us to be the to put the first people in space to you know to be the first in, in several different uh, fronts in the space race, and uh, you know they they succeeded in many of those cases, and but they paid a heavy, heavy price. And this one was one of these cases where it could have been far more deadly than it actually was. Cosmonauts Lavir... I'm going to get these names completely wrong. I have to check my notes. Vasily Lazarev, Lazaryev, and Oleg Makarov. Those were the two cosmonauts in Soyuz 18A. And when they first entered their spacecraft, they had no clue that things were about to go horribly, horribly wrong um, and almost result in their deaths. So basically for Soyuz 18A, the, the idea was to blast these guys into space and then they would have a two month mission on the Soyuz space station. Sorry, the Salyut 4 space station. So it was a very ambitious kind of mission plan. So they blasted off from Baikonur in Kazakhstan, and they reached about 90 miles in, at, in altitude when things started to go wrong with their Soyuz spacecraft. What happened was that one of the stages basically failed to completely separate. So, you know, you have multi-stage rockets, and on each stage, once it gets to a certain point and a certain amount of fuel has been expended, it cuts off, and then several releases are supposed to automatically go so that the stage can drop off before the, sec the next stage in line ignites. Only a few of those latches went undone and the, the stage wound up sticking to the, to the stage above it. And so when that stage above ignited, instead of blasting into open air it, or into space, it blasted into the top of the remaining stage below it. It did separate finally because of that, but because there was that thing below, it threw the rocket horribly off trajectory. And the way the Soyuz spacecraft had been designed, um, what happened next was that automated systems kicked in. At this point, the, um, the, the rescue module at the top of the Soyuz spacecraft was still, the, the spacecraft itself was still low enough that the rescue module could go into effect. It popped its engines off, separated the Soyuz capsule from the stage that was currently burning, and then pointed it toward the ground where it continued to accelerate. Now at this point, the astronauts inside have a WTF moment. They know that alarms are blaring, something has gone completely wrong, and suddenly they're on a trajectory taking them straight back down to Mother Earth. So what I understand of their descent, um, it was quite harrowing. I think at one point they reached over 21 Gs. They did not lose consciousness, but it was so many g-forces that they couldn't talk to each other all they could do is grunt and they could barely breathe it's a miracle that those guys did not pass out okay so that was bad enough now this thing is plummeting toward earth and the parachutes have to deploy now in the past some of the soyuz missions had horrible problems with their parachutes unfortunately in this case they worked parachutes deployed they drifted down into the altai mountains that the cosmonauts were actually worried that they were drifting down into china which at the time would have been a problem because there was some some uh, stress between china and russia but they weren't they were they were drifting down to a, p a place in russia just just inside the border with China into the Altai Mountains. And when the capsule hit the mountain, it started rolling downhill and was headed for a very, very long drop off, a vertical cliff basically, with the parachute dragging behind it. So these guys went from one bad situation to another. They were just about to hit the cliff, which probably would have killed them, when the parachute snagged on some trees and, and brought the capsule to a stop. Okay, so now these guys are finally able to exit their capsule. They're freezing, they're in the middle of nowhere, and they almost went off a cliff. So far, so good, though. They're both alive. Uh, some of them, I think one of them had internal injuries at this point. The other one, uh, they were still having trouble with their vision. 21 plus Gs is going to do some damage to the human body. That's, there's just no way around that. So from there, basically, they had a, a rescue mission come and get to them. They had to survive in the cold for a couple of days, I think. Uh, some of the rescues were aborted. It, it's not that easy to get to this remote area way, way, way up in the mountains. But eventually, they were rescued. Uh, the one with internal injuries never went back to space again. The one with the damage to his eyes finally recovered, and he was able to go back into space eventually. Uh, but at the, it's an interesting side note with this whole thing is that we were getting ready um, to do that kind of uh, political stunt where one of our spacecraft was going to dock with a Russian spacecraft. At the time, 
um, our intelligence services had been monitoring the Russian space program, and they there were some doubts. We, you know, some people in our government did not want us to do it, not because not because of our hatred or fear of the Russians or the Soviets, which there was plenty of, but because we thought that the Soviet space program was crap. Because it was, they were taking way too many risks. Uh, as it turns out, that mission actually did fly. The two aircraft met together, you know, and uh, and latched up, and 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 the press had a field day, and it was very, very successful. But it almost didn't. It almost didn't because of accidents like this that demonstrated to us that the Soviets didn't care about the safety of their astronauts as much as we did. So that's all I've got for now. Again, please buy my book. It'll come, uh, it'll come available in July, but please pre-order it now. Tiger Burning. Pew! Put a picture of it here. End transmission. Hey, TC McCarthy here, the most eclectic and entertained science fiction author on YouTube, maybe even the internet. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. As usual, buy my books. I've got a new one coming out in July, and uh, I'll have a giveaway coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Appreciate you subscribing to my channel, and please, 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 please don't forget to click that little bell icon so that whenever I upload new content, you get notified. Thanks again. See you soon.